Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have Harley Schlanger on first hour on Wednesdays. Uh, or one of our favorite guests, Keisha Rogers, or other special contributors from the LaRouche Foundation. Uh, Harley, give us the latest update, and you've written an article also on the campaign for Keisha Rogers. Uh, this is quite exciting, isn't it? Well, it's exciting because what we're starting to see is people recognizing what a fraud the Texas Democratic Party is for insisting that not only is Keisha not a Democrat, but the Texas Democratic Party is supporting a guy who used to be a large funder of the Republicans. He's a guy who has spent over $4 million on his campaign so far. But of that, all but 23000 was his own contribution. That is, he gave over $4 million to the campaign, and he's only been able to raise $23,000. Whereas Keisha, who, you know, we're chronically underfunded, but we've raised almost $60,000 for her campaign. Wow. So the party really is good. basically putting his money bags in because they figured he'd help fund the campaigns and keep Keisha out. But, but we, I just did an expose on him, which goes through the fact that he was a dentist who built up a series of cut-rate clinics that was mostly making money from Medicaid. And he bundled them all together and sold them to a hedge fund uh, for about $50 million. The hedge fund was run by two protégés of the junk bond king and convicted swindler, Michael Milken. Uh -oh. And so he became a millionaire because of Wall Street swindlers. Then what Alamil did was he ran for Congress as a Democrat, after giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to Republicans, he contributed to Rick Perry, to Greg Abbott, who's the Republican candidate for governor in Texas, and he contributed to Cornyn, who he's now running against. Uh, then he switched to the Democratic Party, ran for Congress in 2012, spent $4 million in that campaign, and finished fourth in the Democratic primary. So you can see he's not much of a, a uh, savvy candidate. But he went to the Democratic Party and said, look, I'll fund Wendy Davis's governor's race, and I'll fund my own race, so you won't have to pay anything uh, if you back me. So the Democratic Party's backing him against Keisha. What's interesting is that his Wall Street background puts him easily in the category of an Obama Democrat, a Wall Street Democrat. And what people who are supporting the, the leadership of the Democratic Party, and there aren't many, but people who are, are doing so without really being clear on the fact that Obama's going down. Now, you may have seen the polls that came out yesterday. Oh, yeah, the Washington Post poll, which usually has Obama higher than every other poll, now has him at 41 percent. Uh, there are other polls, Rasmussen and others in the 36 to 38 range. But I think what, what's happening is that, it, forget the, the popular opinion polls, Obama has lost the country and he's lost the allies. He's, he's gone one bridge too far with this Ukraine situation where Putin is completely outflanking him. The U.S. military is doing what he says even while they're coming up with fallback options of not confronting Russia because there's no reason to confront Russia. On top of that, the allies are saying, all right, we'll give you a little bit more in sanctions, but we think your policy is crazy. He went to Japan to enlist the aid of, of Prime Minister Abe in an anti-China military buildup. And Abe said, well, we're going to do a military buildup, but we don't want to be uh, confronting China right now, especially not with you, because we're not sure we can trust you. Oh, then he no. went to the Philippines, where he <laughs> opened a new base. But while he was there, there was a very large demonstration in Manila, which received no coverage in the U.S. press, and prominent at the front of the demonstration, which Obama could see as he drove into the presidential palace, were two very large posters of Obama with a Hitler mustache, which were held there by supporters of the Philippine LaRouche Society. Right, and also they, uh, they also burned him in effigy there in the Philippines, too. Yes, they did, because they don't want to go to war with China either. What can they gain? I mean, the Philippines is not exactly a great military power. Uh, the confrontation they, they have with China is largely the result of this uh, present <clears throat> president who is semi-autistic, the son of Benino Aquino. The right. only reason he became elected president was because of his mother and father. 
but right. he has he spends most of his time watching kung fu movies, which I guess maybe he and Obama have something in common because I'm told Obama spends most of his time watching uh, NBA and college basketball videos. Right. So you have these semi-autistic presidents. In the case of Obama, he can speak fairly well when he's got a, a, a script in front of him. Right. But look, the, the, the point that I think needs to be made, and, and you know, we last week, by the way, we got lots of calls from your listeners who wanted to participate in the campaign to bring down Obama. We're making progress. There are, maybe in the next segment, I can go through all the outstanding issues that are starting to bring Democrats over to realize they have to dump him. But the most important thing is the war danger. And people realize without hesitation that Obama is dragging us toward another war, whether it's Syria or whether it's uh, Russia. And on or, the or Syria both. thing... And they're linked, by the way. They're, John, they're two of them John, are linked. So that if one breaks out, the other one's going to literally fall very quickly. Yeah. But John Kerry now, after this, this very significant report by uh, Seymour Hirsch on the, what he, I think it was called the rat line, on how it was that chemical weapons were delivered to the rebels and that the chemical weapons attacks that were cited by Obama as the cause for war with Syria last summer were done by the rebels. And this was from top people in the U.S. military, the intelligence community, and Obama's inner circle who leaked this. Now Kerry is again saying, oh, we have absolutely certain evidence that there was a chlorine gas attack by the Syrian government. Oh, come and no on. one, no one believes it anymore. Uh, you Kerry know well, why did they? Why did they just stop? I mean, if they open their mouth, they just look more ridiculous. Uh, the Europeans aren't going to back them. The uh, and no one is going to go in direct military conflict with Russia. And Russia, by the way, doesn't want a conflict. That's they just right. want to protect. Just, they, Russia is begging us not to do it. What they're basically saying is, protect Russian citizens. Let's get all the parties to the table. Let's get a real election going, not this coup government that's going on there. And let's have all the parties involved. Let's set up a federation of these different sub-republics of Ukraine. And if they want to ally themselves with Russia, it's their business. Stay well, out of it, instead, America and Europe. And, as you said, <clears throat> an illegal coup government, which right. has Nazis in prominent positions. And this is really where... I'll just give it, it, you one quick uh, vignette of what's happening. Yesterday was the 70th birthday of former German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder. Ah, yes. Schroeder we talked about that last week. in St. Petersburg with Putin. And coming along with him was a man named Misfelder, who is the top spokesman for the Merkel government in the, on foreign policy in the parliament. Uh-huh. So you had the leaders of two different parties, both of which are part of the current government, uh, having a birthday party with Putin while Merkel is wow. saying to Obama, oh, don't worry, we're with you, but we just won't send any troops or planes into Lithuania because we don't think Lithuania is a target of Russian aggression. That's you know, crazy. The, the British just absurd. sent six fighter bombers to Lithuania. The uh-huh. French sent six to Poland to back up the 12 F-16s that we provided Poland. These countries are not under threat from Russia. Uh, the U.S. and NATO are asking Finland and Sweden to become uh, partners in NATO, not full members, but partners, warning that the Russians intend to take Göteborg, which is an island in the Baltic, as a stepping stone toward taking Sweden. Now, oh, come on. This is where you see <laughs> where, where the they, This is insanity. fantasy. This is fantasy. There's no strategic need for Russia to do that. What Russia wants is to, to, uh, to take their single economy based on oil and gas and modernize it. They want to collaborate with China for manufacturing, with Europe. They want to have a, 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 a being treated with respect, not having missile systems on their border, which takes away their ability to even do a, a mutual assured destruction, basically detente. But instead, the West wants to remove that and guarantee a nuclear war. It's amazing. It is amazing. Welcome back at the issue of Obama is really coming to a head. I think we only have now months away from the midterm elections. And the current policies could precipitate a, uh, <clears throat> I mean, nobody trusts Obama, not the Israelis, 
although he's given them equipment that could allow them to do a, a, a long-range attack on Iran. He doesn't, no one feels like uh, they have, that America has their back. And that includes Mr. Abe in Japan. Uh, th this is a, financially, the policies that America is pursuing are suicidal to the economy, not just of America, but the world. Uh, their policies dealing with Syria still doesn't get off the rail and the stupidity of trying to claim that Bashar al-Assad, an eye doctor, trained in Britain, who was conscripted to actually take over his father's head of the Alawite party in running Syria. Syria is one of the few examples where all different religious groups, including different branches of Islam, got along because they all had a desire to maintain the, the nation of Syria, which is multicultural, multilingual, very advanced people. And I can tell you, it's, it's actually the terminus at Damascus of the Silk Trail, the major trading trail that went all the way to China. What people should understand is Obama wants to break it up, just like the British have in the last couple hundred years, break up and balkanize any conquered people. And they don't care how much destruction. Right now, though, the allies with Iran and with, with Russia make it a guarantee that if there's an attack on Syria and Iran, it will precipitate a thermonuclear exchange with the great powers and the dissolution and the total destruction of America. And people don't get that. They don't realize we have a maniac, a mentally deranged person in the White House, literally just as crazy as Nero. Uh, we we don't have, we have a person who's out of his mind, basically, and he's proved it over and over again. Well, I think, I think most of your listeners would agree with that, or at least would acknowledge he's a liar, he's abused the powers of his office, he's violated the Constitution repeatedly, and yet they would turn around and say, well, but I've got to go to work, or I've got to take care of my kids, I can't get involved. What's happening now is more and more people are saying, I have to do something. And I was uh, on an activist call last night talking with people, and someone who was a little skeptical just said, just tell me, what should I say to people who don't want to do something? And I said, you're an American. You have a unique opportunity, but also a unique responsibility. We have a nation where the citizens are sovereign by our founding documents, but that's being taken away from us. You have to stand up now to defend your rights as a citizen or you will lose them forever. And I think that's what we have to say to people. And, you know, as I said, we've been getting more calls in from these programs. We had a one week where no one called in. I, I think maybe everyone just got demoralized or something. But I want to give out our number early today for people to call in who want to. This is Impeachment Central. You want to join us? We're getting motion around the country now to get Obama out. Yeah. And it's 800-922-2907. Uh, that's again, it's toll free for you. Just tell them you heard it with uh, Dr. Bill Beagle, 800 922 2907. And if you want to speak with me, tell whoever answers the call that you, you would like to speak with me. Now, let me no, just go through a couple very, things that have happened. Just in want to mention one thing first, though. Policy debacles, yeah. which are coming back at Obama. In Sarasota, Florida, a judge ruled that as of last Friday, the FBI had to deliver some 42,000 pages of documents on uh, the FBI investigation into Saudi involvement in 9-11. They right. had a whole group of these so-called terrorists who were in Florida on the payroll of Prince Bondar and his foundation who were going to pilot school, who were hanging out. You know, these weren't exactly devout Muslims. They were hanging out at strip clubs and things like that. Pink the pony. FBI has just tons of evidence on it that's been suppressed. Okay. And the judge ruled that it had to be provided to him by last Friday. Right. The FBI did deliver something, but apparently it's so redacted that the judge is going yeah. through it with a fine-tooth comb, and he's going to come back either with a contempt citation of the FBI or possibly an action against the president, because it's the president who was is one of the plaintiffs, or defendants, rather, in the case. This is a Freedom of Information Act case. It's very significant because Obama is continuing the Bush-Cheney cover-up of the Saudi role. Right. Now, secondly... The question is still up in the air, what will the Senate Intelligence Committee do about Obama's 
giving the report of the Senate Intelligence Committee to the CIA to redact, that is, to, to black out uh, relevant passages to protect CIA agents, uh, when it's the CIA that they're protecting. You, you don't give the agency that committed the crime the right to black out the report. That would be <laughs> like taking a Wall Street swindler and putting him before the court, but the judge lets the swindler decide what the evidence can be. So uh, Feinstein so far has been quite adamant and angry, but we know she's compromised. But what's interesting is Ron Wyden, the Democrat from Oregon, and now Jay Rockefeller. And this is very interesting, because Jay Rockefeller is a pretty bad guy, and he's retiring. But because he's retiring, he may not want to go out as the number two man in the Intelligence Committee who allowed this cover-up of Cheney's torture to continue. So that's another thing hitting Obama. Now on the NSA, there's more and more evidence coming out that Obama's so-called changes are not even superficial. There are no changes at all on the spying on on American citizens. And in fact, what he did was expand it by getting the phone companies and the Internet companies to sign on to uh, holding on to the data that's being collected. So supposedly the NSA is not going to hold on to it, which I don't believe because they just built this facility the size of about 30 football fields near Salt Lake City to hold the documents. Right. In fact, what they're doing is, uh, I, I, let me just fill in some facts, and this is classified, so uh, I didn't have to take any oaths because I was a physician, but I took care of the employees working at the first and largest database underground at Shriver Air Force Base, which is a primary node for the World Authentication System, the Virtual World Project, or the Matrix. It's an array of supercomputers, Cray-4, and the galley marcenide quantum computer, Cray-5, each Cray-5 equivalent to a computing capacity of 100,000 Cray-4s. Okay, so when they say the Chinese have the most advanced quantum computing, it's all hogwash. It's us. And this Bluffdale facility is a new type of uh, quantum computer that developed that they want to actually record everything. I mean, we're not just talking about Americans. We're talking about every transaction, every phone call, every email, every conversation, right down to your GPS coordinates of your cell phone for everybody on Earth. Everybody on Earth. And this is tied directly to this new coming currency system they want to have. They want to revise and crash the current system so that they have total prescient control. All other forms of money, coin, cash in your pocket, currency, uh, you know, encrypted, uh, uh, you know, like the Bitcoin system or encrypted uh, bartering, anything else will be illegal. And this is already in Patriot Act 1, so people need to understand that, that Obama is following the rules of the, the City of London and they're moving step by step. They're lying every step of the way and completely monitoring everybody on Earth. Everyone on Earth is being monitored. Not a person is left out, except maybe in the third world country underneath the jungle tree. That's about it. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, let's go back to some basics. You had a really good discussion on the break about what we need to do for solutions, and that's what I love about the approach of the LaRouche Foundation. You talk solutions, and they're systematic, they're organized, they're repeatedly mentioned for many months or even years before the crisis happens and afterward. And uh, let's go through that. All right, well, just to finish on the Obama thing, he's very weak right now. And the weakness is not just the bungling internationally, but on the economy. And let me just give a couple of examples. One is, look at what's happening to Bank of America stock. It's starting to fall. Now, if there were a real audit of Bank of America, its stock would be going for less than a penny a share because they have the second or third largest derivatives holdings. They're still completely enmeshed in the mortgage-backed security fraud. There are multiple investigations of how Bank of America, as a single bank, was involved in taking homes of about a million families without due process, without actually owning the mortgages they foreclosed on. And and they never fixed that, did they? They, they never corrected the problem. They paid some kind of fine, and that was it, right? Well, they, they paid a fine. There's another case coming forward. The, the real crime is not only did they throw families out of their homes, but they did it to protect the value of the mortgage-backed securities they were holding because Boy. they were more marketable with the home now being up for sale again than if you kept a family in it that was having trouble paying. So they did it to protect their own balance sheet. 
not because of any legal responsibility, because they could have negotiated many of these things. And they were supposed to, under the so-called Geithner-Obama uh, Housing uh, Refinancing Act, which was a real fraud. So between the fraud of Geithner and Obama and the swindle of Bank of America, there is another shoe going to drop with Bank of America. Citigroup, the largest derivative holder in the country, uh, is in deep trouble now. They failed a stress test, and they're now having to cash in some of the few uh, instruments they have that are worth something to build up their regulatory capital. And Deutsche Bank, a third bank, which is one of the largest in the world, had its stock collapse because they're about to get hit for the LIBOR scandal. Now, in the midst of this, all this bailout that's going on, all the quantitative easing, all the suffering of the American people because the administration never lifted a finger, nor did Congress, to produce a single job or a program that would help people find jobs. All that going on, this is coming back to hit Obama. And I'm not even going to talk about Obamacare because you and I have talked about it repeatedly. It's a fascist piece of crap to bail out the insurance companies. So the possibility of getting this guy out of office has gone up in the last weeks. And this is where we need people to step forward and join us, make calls, bombard the Congress. Is your congressman going to be the last one to stand up for the Constitution, or will he be the first? And I, I want people to call us to be part of this. It's uh, 800-922-2907. And I'll give that number again toward the end of the program, 800-922-2907. Now, to get to the solution, and this is something you and I have talked about quite a bit, there's a principle in the U.S. Uh, Constitution which was developed by Alexander Hamilton this idea of regulating interstate commerce, the regulating of the coin, currency, and debt of the country. And Hamilton set up something that was unique to the United States, which is the reason for the success of the United States, which is as an, as an industrial agriculture advancing economy, which is the idea of a credit system, that you don't allow private banks to make money by loaning money to the federal government as the Federal Reserve does, the private banking system that we have running the country. Instead, Hamilton had a national bank which basically generated credit in the name of the government, but it went through the national bank to specific projects that they knew would return, reach a high return for the credit that was made available, and that this was then monetized by the Treasury Department through Treasury notes, which were then convertible so that the businesses and entrepreneurs could borrow the money they needed to hire people, to buy the equipment they needed, to develop the new machines, whether it was the spinning jenny or things of that sort. So that what Hamilton understood is that debt in itself is not the problem. The question is, are you going into debt or establishing a line of credit that will allow you to produce more than you consume in the debt payment and, and the process of production? Or are you going into debt to pay debt, which means you're just increasing your debt? Which and is what's happening right now with America. Policies. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. what'd you say? So that's what America is doing now. We're expanding debt without actually expanding the mechanism of an economy. Yeah, we're expanding the, the volume of money. But money is not a measure of wealth unless there's actually a physical economy that the money's related to. Right. And since we're shutting down our physical economy, we're losing our agricultural land because of the drought and because of the, the funny business of credit derivatives when it comes to crop insurance and things of that sort. We're losing our food producers. We're increasingly dependent on Mexico and Honduras and other poorer countries for our food. Uh, you add to that the fact that we're not producing nuclear power plants. We're not researching fusion to get online fusion as quickly as possible. Well, well we're not part of the problem is, is the compartmentalization of what I call the bifurcation of civilization. Uh, I had security clearance and knew that we already had fusion engines 50 years ago. I already know that we have operations of mining on the moon, helium-3. I know we have an advanced space-based Star Wars program. 
most of the technical problems that we have, think we still have today in 2014, have been solved decades ago. We all misapplication of technology, such as uh, instead of advancing new technologies for making people well, we don't even stop things that we know are dangerous, like genetically modified food, fluoridation of water, uh, smart meters, which actually increase the chances of cyber terrorism and can cause fires and electrotoxic effects on living things, including the bees. All of these technologies have been suppressed. So the problem isn't just a matter of putting more money into devising them. It's to breaking down these kind of black op barriers that have been purposely set up. Under Obama, he finally closed the last part of NASA. So our entire space program now has either gone private or black op. Well, and, and as a result of these things, what we're seeing is that the physical economy of the United States has been reduced to an unsustainable level. And that right. means people are going to start dying because of this. It's not no, it's simply a, a question for it all. are we not making enough money. It's that we're not yeah. producing those things which are needed. Exactly. In other words, uh, we should be producing more food. We should be selling gas and oil and energy around the world. Uh, we should be advancing medical technology to have export our technology to other countries. In every area, we have all kinds of resourceful people, technology, minerals, everything we need in order to have a fantastic economy. But we don't, have, like the Chinese, we don't have high-speed rail everywhere, which we should have across the country, northern uh, tier, mid-states, lower, and on both coasts. We don't have a system of uh, what I call total atomic, uh, we call recycling of everything. We shouldn't be putting that things was killed in the by, You remember, that was killed by Jimmy Carter. When we had the Barnwell, South Carolina reprocessing plant, when we had the Clinch Breeder uh, breeder Reactor Program, Carter killed those programs uh, for dubious reasons. And, you know, I, I found something out the other day that's very interesting. I know you'll appreciate this. Uh, Ted Turner, the guy who's so deluded he didn't even know that Jane Fonda's boobs were fake, uh, Turner is part of what's called the Billionaires Club. And this right. is people like Bill and Melinda Gates, it's um, uh, uh, well. I'll get to it after the 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 uh, break. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's very important. Yeah. When we return, I mean, this is a dose of reality. And by the way, we need to pick up our scepters and stop being victims and just rule. First off, get rid of Obama. Deal with the fact that we do have solutions for everything. Larouche is a great deal of them. Get on the side. This is repeal, impeach, central. Welcome back, and Harley, let's repeat those numbers, and again, this is Impeachment Central. Uh, the solutions are straightforward if you really want solutions. Uh, they require a change in attitude, a change of perspective. You have to realize you're really being had. What we have is a, is a collaborative crime going on, and it doesn't matter what form of, of so-called uh, corporate globalism you talk about, whether it's communist, uh, socialist, corporatist, it basically means a lack of proper representative government. Without proper operation of government, all you have is rich people and powerful corporations running everything. So government's important. It's not unimportant. In fact, it's almost like the powers that be are trying to convince us that we should never have and never seek representation because they make it such a scam. So when we bring in somebody like Obama, they want to destroy the office of a presidency. They don't want a powerful, strong leader with good moral fiber that wants to lead a people. They don't want representative politicians and like uh, like Keisha Rogers that has a backbone and a soul and a brain to match and an attitude of America and people first. They don't want that. The corporations and the powers that be want to have little uh, robots that basically will do the corporate bidding, even if it harms the people and destroys nations. And you know, something, I think that something in what you just said reminds me of a discussion I had on a radio station, which was a predominantly African-American listening audience. And one of the callers called in and said, I agree with you about Obama, that he's been a disaster. He's done more damage to African-Americans than any previous president uh, uh, in the 20th century, uh, even before. But he said, here's the problem I have. The African-American population still has an emotional attachment to him as the first black president, and they have a hard time reconciling that with how bad he's been. So how would you address that? And I said, look, the most important thing is people have to realize those who supported him, those who had hopes for him, they made a mistake. Just admit it. The, one of the, the most liberating things is to acknowledge that you made a mistake in judgment. 
Right. Now, similarly, people in your audience who are sitting there saying, how did this guy get in? I didn't vote for him. I don't know anyone who supports him. But they've made a mistake also, which right. is that they've assumed that the bad that he's doing can be contained, and that all they have to do is get a Republican in there or some other person in there, and it'll make a huge difference. And that's a mistake. You're not going to get justice unless you act for justice. That's why I'll give out these numbers again. It's 800-922-2907. And I encourage people to call us. We are Impeachment Central here at our office. We've got Keisha's campaign going. She's the only candidate right now whose leading issue in her race for the U.S. Senate is to impeach Obama. And she is in the runoff in Texas, the Democratic Party runoff, because of that stand. So this is impeachment central. We're coordinating from here a national drive in, in every single state, in every single congressional district. We have people who are involved in mobilizing the forces to get Obama out. And that's why people should call us. Again, if you want to talk to me, you can ask for me, but you can also talk to our other people here. We have very good staff here. It's 800-922-2907. This is the LaRouche office in Houston. And as I said earlier at the beginning of the show, Obama is losing the support that he had. I mean, even Maureen Dowd. You know Maureen Dowd, the ditzy woman who writes for the New York Times, who loved to attack Bush and Cheney, but until recently was a big Obama supporter? She took Obama's recent speech where he said, look, what, what I'm doing is not glamorous. People wanted me to hit home runs, but I'm hitting a lot of singles. I don't know why he thinks he's hitting singles. It looks to me like he's popping out to the catcher most of the time. But anyway, Obama said that, and Maureen Dowd said, weren't you the guy who was going to change history? Weren't you the guy who was going to lower the levels of the oceans? Weren't you the guy who was going to solve all the problems in the world? Now you're talking about getting bunt singles? So even right. fawning supporters are attacking him. Well, the first so, is, uh, let's look at the list of things he did. He has the most non-transparent presidency ever. He uh, aggravates uh, foreign powers when it's not even the right tact, for example, the tact to deal with Mr. Putin is one where we collaborate both in uh, both environmental, educational, collaborative space and other projects with the very most advanced physicists on Earth, the Russians, and even the drug uh, issues where we were collaborating with them to try to stop the drug trade coming out of Afghanistan. Instead, Obama blows it in every possible way. Rather than trying to say, look, you know, it's reasonable for me to treat Russian citizens in these other republics with respect and have some Russian ties there, they literally erect uh, an anti-first strike weapon system to aggravate the heck out of the Russians and force them to put more of their single economy back into weapon systems that possibly could guarantee in a mistake a nuclear exchange. And then we have uh, Obama with Obamacare handing it over, which he does to all these so-called czars, to insurance companies and drug companies to write the bill when it should have been written by a 10-page bill, one subject, one object, solve the problems of uninsured Americans and people with pre-existing conditions and keeping costs controlled and getting the care back under the control of the doctor instead of Health and Human Services setting up, quote, treatment pathways and protocols. Everything this man touches, he's like the Pied Piper from Hamlin and the mixture of the of the Midas touch, only it's the anti-Midas touch. Everything it's the reverse touches, Midas touch, yeah. Everything he touches turns to, to basically cow manure. Well, it's and, unbelievable. And the point here it's, is that we can blame Obama all we want because he is the worst president. But, but he, he is terrible. Well, we, we don't just blame at, him, though. It's all the functionaries behind him. Look at the American people tolerating he, it. Well, yeah, exactly. But what do we have here? Obama is, a, is basically an ex-bisexual, drug-addicted prostitute. And he's prostituted to Soros and the banks to do whatever they want. And they don't even know what they want. To be honest with you, one of the biggest fallacies that the globalists or the billionaires have, number one, two clues to rub together. Number two, want to put a system that's sustainable. They don't care. They're like the piranhas that are eating the last donkey falling into the Amazon. George Soros and these guys just want to make off with as much money as they can, even if they wreck the world economy and cause billions to die or cause a thermonuclear war. They don't really care. And they don't have the brains to actually know that it's best for a parasite to maintain the health of the host. That's what's crazy about these people. And Obama's just a willing, stupid, and he's a very stupid man, obviously. He's not bright. 
He's a very willing, stupid man who's willing to prostitute himself, and now he, his, his ego is being bruised because he, he thought that he could just kind of he schmooze it in and be a celebrity president. When in fact, you have to actually deliver the goods, guy. You can't just pretend you're good because you're compliant with your globalist masters, and everybody should love you because you have a big, broad smile. You well, and I, I think the point is that what we're seeing now <laughs> is an opportunity for people to stop being cynical, stop blaming everyone else, and actually right. roll up their sleeves and join in in the kind of coordinated activity that can throw this bum out. Exactly. And what Linda LaRouche's concept that Obama is used up. And what do you yeah. do with used toilet paper? You flush it. You don't parade it around and say, gee, things are really bad because all we have is used toilet paper. You get rid of it. <laughs> and this exactly. is a president who has overstayed his welcome. The fact that he was elected twice, including by fraud in the caucuses in 2008, probably fraud in 2012, isn't so impressive. We have in our Constitution a remedy for that. It's called what? impeachment. Right. We'd also show me that the, the public need to grow up in terms of being voters, being involved with the politicking, the false, you know, the voter rolls where there's people that are dead that voted, the fact that there were illegals voting, the fact that people would continue to vote in the second term when they knew that Obama screwed everything in the first term, including those people who were black or were, quote, Democrats who thought they had to stick with Obama, even if he was doing policies that made them nauseated. The Democratic Party starting to finally get it. If they stick with this guy, he's going to kill the party. And he won't just kill the party. If you leave unrestrained neo-Nazi Republicans in control, you're really going to wreck the country because they'll try to convince us that austerity fascism is really good and it's good to but kill it'll granny. Work. They'll try and it'll... convince you that it works. And the only thing it works for is protecting the banks and the insurance companies and killing people. Well, that's why I don't agree with this uh, with a lot of the policies of the Tea Party and these libertarians. I think they're nuts. You have to expand credit. You don't when you want to expand a business. You borrow money so that you can build infrastructure to build a bigger business. And America is a business, okay? And you can't do this. You can't do what we're doing now, either on the Democratic side or Republican side, and have a future for America as a world leader. You can't. Well, and I totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Lewis Foundation, the number on impeachment central, 800 922 800 Amazing job today. Harley, keep it up. Keisha Rogers, go. I want her not only to be senator, I want her to someday be president. <laughs> she has the she has the heart and the brains to do it. And the backbone, the titanium alloy backbone to stand up. See you next week, Harley. Uh, coming okay. up, hour two, our health and wellness hour, hour three, Dr. Bob Teal. You don't want to miss it. Coming up tomorrow, Carl Gallup's amazing information of what's going on in Israel and end time issues. Major update tomorrow with Tim Alexander, our military uh, history historical analyst, and Chris Harris.